This is why I train in martial arts. This article I'm about to go over is a good example of why I do not like to teach preemptive striking and why I think we need to go on the assumption that your first move in your forms is defensive. You'll see why in a minute. For those of you who don't know, a preemptive strike is basically when you're in a violent confrontation and you hit first. You hit first because usually whoever hits first in the fight is the person that wins the fight. I'm going to get into it in a minute. This is also why I believe that your first move in the forms that you do in a martial art, I believe it is a defensive move and I believe it is in fact a block. If you ever start studying um, pressure point theory and start learning how to apply the moves in the forms, you're going to run into a school of thought that says that there are no blocks, there are no defensive moves in Taekwondo karate in forms. There, there's no block. That Everything's an attack. Well, when everything's an attack, I think you subconsciously train yourself to attack, 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 attack. It's like I said in another video, when you're punchy, you train yourself to be punchy, 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 punchy all the time. Now, I'm not trying to just say this to just come down on this guy, because this situation is something I hope I never find myself in. It says a martial arts martial artist facing assault charges. This guy is the same age I am. He's 46 years old. This is up in Canada. A local martial arts instructor is facing a charge of assault, causing bodily harm for cold cocking a First Nations man outside the Coldwater Hotel last May. If my interpretation of a Canadian English is correct, I think he hit a Native American outside of this bar. The defendant is Anthony Kim Carlton. He was in court and he represented himself. Bad move. And it's been two days for the trial and they're going to wrap it up in June of 2017. So basically, I'm, just, I'm going to put a link to this in the description. I'm just going to paraphrase. Basically what happened is there was a bunch of uh, commotion who bled this bar this martial arts instructor right here, he's a fifth degree black belt in whatever his style is. I can't remember his style. I think it's some style of karate. He knows somebody at the bar. Sometimes he helps to break up fights. And his girlfriend works there. What happened is somebody put their hands on his girlfriend. He says hit. But according to the article, it sounds like that somebody pushed his girlfriend. So he thought that this First Nations man... I cannot remember his name. It's an article. Well, anyway, he thought that the guy that, um, okay, here it is, Shane Hurst. He thought that Shane Hurst was the person that pushed his girlfriend. So when eventually Shane Hurst was ushered to leave, he followed Shane Hurst outside. And according to, what's his name? Kim what? According to Anthony Kim Carlton, it was a mutual fight, and he basically hit the guy first. He hit the guy first. But this is what's actually happened. Her girlfriend testified. She said that, here she is. She told the court, Carlton came off the bar yelling that Hurst hit his girlfriend. He pushed her aside, and then he punched Hurst in the jaw. In the jaw. And then I started screaming because he was knocked out, says Edwards. She says her dentures were broken in half as a result of the punch and produced a red mark on his chin. So, broken dentures and red mark. Now, also in the article, um, what's the guy's name? Uh, I'm, I'm sleepy, so forgive me. Uh, Master Kim Carlton said that he didn't punch the guy. He used the open hand technique and he hit pressure points and it doesn't really hurt. The pressure point that he used doesn't really hurt. He didn't punch the guy. He used an open hand technique and that's why the guy fell down. But he wasn't trying to hurt the guy. The guy wasn't really hurt. Well, 
First of all, according to my own pressure point study, the worst thing that a man can do to another man is actually use an open hand strike. Open hand strikes, according to the pressure point theory that I've been studying, is the worst thing that you can do for male against male. It's actually less dangerous, according to pressure point theory, for a male to strike a male with a closed fist. Now, I personally would prefer to use an open hand technique because to me it's easier to control and be more defensive with open hands. And to me, it makes you feel more gentle and you can you can block better. Sorry about that. Anyway, like I said, I like to use empty hand, open hand, because I feel like you get you can be more defensive and you can also do like this. But according to pressure point theory, that's the worst thing for man on man is to use a palm strike. So that kind of doesn't hold water. Another thing, too, is the problem is not necessarily from the strike. It's from when the person who took the strike hit the ground. And after he's hit the ground, his dentures were broken in half as a result of the punch. And the girlfriend said that, here it is, she said that Hurst has had mood swings ever since he was struck, which led to the couple breaking up. He has changed since he got hit by you. Where was it? I want to find that text where she said he was a happy man before he got hit. Well, you can read that in the article. So that's just like there's a documentary that's out that's called One Punch Homicide. Where a lot of times it's not the actual hit that does the real damage. It's what happens to the person when their head hits the ground that causes the damage. So you just have to be careful all the way around. So anyway, this is why I do not teach preemptive striking. I prefer that you block as much as you can. I mean, if you if it's if like I say, if it's I tell people, if it's dark alley, the guy's coming out of nowhere, that's one thing. But something like this, this is bordering on an ego fight. If somebody's trying to ego fight start an ego fight with you. You should block as much as you can unless you feel like the person is just going to end up hurting you. and You're going to end up falling on the ground and losing your teeth. Now, this is where he's this is where I think guys are going to really get in trouble, even though I'm not an attorney. Flanagan, who is Flanagan? Flanagan is the prosecutor, I believe. You know what? Let me search for this. Crown Prosecutor Neil Flanagan, that's the prosecutor in this case. So the prosecutor, this is what he says. You could have just stayed inside, Flanagan said. The reason I suggest you didn't stay inside is that you thought someone had pushed your girlfriend and you were going to go outside and make someone pay, said Flanagan. See, that's where I think guys are going to get in trouble. Because it does sound like, if you, you read the whole article, it does sound like he could have let it go. That someone actually may have just pushed her. Or even if they may have hit her, she was not seriously hurt. I understand you want to protect your woman and things like that. But going after somebody after the fact, especially if it's true that she just got pushed, that's not protecting your woman. That's going to get somebody back. That's payback. I understand feeling like you want to knock somebody out because 
They, they touched your woman, but legally, you can't do that. Legally, you become the aggressor. So, and this is the last part of this is the last part of article right here. Right now, my submission to you will be that Mr. Colton is guilty on his own evidence, Flanagan told Judge Frame, who granted the adjournment. And this is gonna go back to trial on June 8th, 2017. So look, this is an experienced martial artist that did this. This was not in America. This was not in the hood of America. So you can't try to bring those dynamics into it. But the point is, this guy is going to be judged a lot more harshly because he's a martial artist. And to me, it goes back to the thing of just trying training yourself to think that hit, hit is everything. Abandoning the idea that your first move should be defensive. And he went towards the fight instead of trying to go away from the fight. So I wish him all the best. I really do. Wish him all the best. But it doesn't sound like to me like he's going to have an easy time in this one. And I'm not saying I wish anything bad on him. I wish this thing had never happened. But, you know, when you get into a fight, if it's not, if you're not doing straight up self-defense, where you are 100%, oh my goodness, this person's attacking me out of the blue and I must defend myself, nobody wins. So don't think that just because you're a martial artist that, you know, if you whip out your brand of whatever dough or whatever food it is, that it can't come back to bite you. Because it can. And I really feel bad for the guy that got hit and hit the sidewalk. Because now he's going to have problems for the rest of his life because he took a traumatic blow to the head. Just bad all the way around. Go look at the article. If you want to comment below, comment. Oh, do me a favor too. Like, comment, and subscribe. And make a donation to the mat fund I have set up so that we can get some good mats over there at the community center. Peace. Come and take a class, or less than a tank of gas. Learn to use your hands and be slow, cause won't kick your, you know, cheaper than a car note or any other bills. See Su Ryu Taekwondo located in Temple Hills. Go to the Temple Hills Community Center and register for the Taekwondo class. Call 301-894-6616. You want to find out more? Go to cecilryu.org, cecilryu.org. Peace.